What's up guys? It's your boy Ethan. We have the biggest, fattest burrito ever. And I'm gonna mouth this in the car real quick. Uh, I've eaten Chipotle a lot in this uh, California trip. Anyways, we're right outside Ocean's Eleven and uh, getting a quick little dinner before we uh, before we head in there. So we're on the 2-5 list. There's a lot of people on 2-5 list. Also a little chilly outside, super windy. So we're recording this in the car. Uh, hopefully the lighting's pretty good, but um, yeah, a little little pre-session meal, always a good time. We're back in front of uh, Ocean's Eleven, like the last two days has been absolutely phenomenal. And uh, yes, I was lazy once again, so I'm wearing glasses, but uh, last two days have just been the craziest, amazing two, five sessions back to back ever. So uh, hopefully day three will be pretty good. So uh, wish us some run good. Gonna finish this bad boy, this really big Chipotle burrito. And with that said, let's get in the action. Good stuff. Hand number one of this 2-5 game starts off spicy with 6-9 of diamonds in the big blind. There's a limper and a cutoff raise to $25. The button makes the call and very early on in the session, I've seen the cutoff be very aggressive early on. So we'll see how this goes. I 3-bet to $125. We're mixing it up real early here with a nice 3-bet. Only the cutoff makes the call who opened, so we're off to a flop. The flop comes, Jack, 10, 7, 2 diamonds. We flop the gutter to a straight flush, and what a crazy flop for us. Pretty much nutted on this flop, happy to get it all in, so I decided to see at $150. He tanks for a long while, very early. Ends up folding, and you know, we didn't 3-bet 6-9 suited to not show this. We show the table because it's fun and picks up a good image for us. The very next hand after that, we're in the small blind picking up ace-10 off. The hijack, the cutoff from last player, opens it up to $20. It folds to me, and this is definitely a good hand to 3-bet, and especially against this opponent that I just showed that I 3-bet him with 6-9 suited. Uh, obviously, ace-10 isn't as strong as I'd like to, but we're sticking to our play here and 3-bet. We size to $80, and he insta-calls, doesn't even think about it. The flop comes ace-queen-10-2 diamonds. Flopping two pair on a very wet board, we decide to size up to $110. He like insta just ships it all in for $580 total. Not much of a decision here to do with two pair. Really never folding here, especially against his opponent, especially against the past actions. So I could be beat sometimes, but let's make the call and run things out. Oh. The runner, runner, diamond is not a good sign for us, but he shows us queen 10 off for bottom two pair, and we scoop a monster pot here very early on. Next hand, Jack eight of hearts in the cutoff playing six handed. There's also an under the gun straddle. So when action folds to me, I decide to open things up to $40 and we get one player to make the call. Yes, it is the same player like we've been playing against the last two hands. So let's see a flop. The flop comes 10, nine, seven, two spades in the club. We are running hot against this specific person, unfortunately for him. He checks and I decide to overbet this pot to $100. He reloaded for $800 total. Let's try to get stacks in. He makes the call with 700 behind. The turn comes the deuce of clubs, brings in a backdoor flush draw and it's such a wet board. He checks and obviously I want stacks in here, trying to find a way to just try to commit his whole stack. Ideally, so with that said, I size up to $300, hoping he'll make the call, hoping that he's maybe a little tilted against me. He thinks, but unfortunately, we're not going to get any action as he folds. Hand after that, picking up Ace-King offsuit with an under the gun straddle out there. Plus one and middle position player limp. The button raises it up to $40 and now onto me. Uh, this same player, man, this button, I'm going to have to three bet you again. This time I size up to $160. And now the plus one player who opened limped, he puts in the limp four bet to $310 and it folds to me. This is less than a min raise. 
This is really, really frustrating. Uh, I think my image is pretty awful right now, considering how aggressive I've been. But uh, this is one of those spots where I almost want to fold because he's always going to have aces or kings here. But for only 150 more, we just toss in a call and we're going to see a flop. The flop comes five, deuce, deuce, rainbow. I check on this board. He ships it for $500 total and I'm out. Uh, really bad here to pretty much punt off. Not really punt off $310, but we lost a, a pretty big one here. Next hand, picking up King Queen of Hearts in the big blind. There are two limpers to me, and here we're gonna continue with the aggressive action. I decided to raise it up to $35 out of position. A uh, player in plus one who limped makes the call. Other player calls as well, so three ways to the flop. The flop comes Queen 7 3, rainbow, top pair on a fairly dry board. We decided to see, but a little bit on the smaller side to $45. A uh, player in plus one makes the call who has been extremely, extremely tight, uh, almost putting him on a hand like ace-queen that he's open limping from early position. Anyways, turn heads up comes the six of hearts. Here, I decided to check and play this a little bit different against this type of player. Just trying to be a little bit tricky, trying to play some pot control against the player that could have us beat. He throws out a bet of $80 and we're never folding here, but let's try to see a good river. We make the call and the river comes another seven. So when this 7 comes, I really don't think that his range is going to be a whole lot of 7x's, especially since he bet on the turn here. So with that said, uh, unlikely he has a 7. I don't really want to let this go check check. Let's try to play for thin value here and target Queen Jack or Queen 10 of some sort. I throw out $160. He tanks for quite some time and ends up making the fold. Next hand in the big blind picking up aces here. Action folds all the way around to the small blind who asks for a chop. Sure, we will chop this up. Ah, uh, unfortunate. Uh, so it's really windy, I'm gonna keep this short, but uh, the two five game just broke for no reason. I don't know, people just got up all at the same time and it just broke, so. We only played two five for about uh, an hour and a half, less than an hour and a half. We were in the game for 800, out of it for 1491 which is really good for the hour and a half, but we don't have enough hands to talk about. So we're gonna hop into the two, three, uh, just to get some content for you guys. Cause I know this video is a little too short. So I do it for the content, doing it for you guys. Hopefully we don't punt off all of our winnings at two, three, but we'll see. Um, we're gonna hop in there, max buying at 400 and wish us some luck. Hopefully we can keep running it up, but we gotta get more hands for y'all. So leave a like, all right? Show that appreciation, show that support because I do it for you guys and it's windy. Let's get back inside. First interesting spot in the 2-3 game, we pick up ace-10 of spades in the small blind. There's a low jack who opens up to $15. Cutoff makes the call, button makes the call, and well, we're in the small blind. It's a decent, strong enough hand here, so we decide to three bet to $85. Folds back to the low jack who decides to fold. Now the cutoff tank calls with only $120 behind, playing very short here. Not sure what this range could be like, calling 15, then calling a three bet, but um, we're going heads up to a flop. The flop comes queen, eight, four, rainbow, and I think we just have to commit our stack here. If he has a queen of some sort, then good for him, but I feel like his range is really condensed to smaller pocket pairs, middle pocket pairs. So with that said, we're here for the contents. I rip it all in, and he folds pretty quickly. Glad to get this one through. Next, pocket queens in the big blinds, and uh, when we look down at this hand, the player to my left under the gun immediately opens up to $25. Really large raise for a 2-3 game. Anyways, even better, we get the hijack and cutoff to both make the call, so we've got a good amount of action here facing a large raise, so um, here, definitely not going to be folding. I put in the 3-bet to $150, pretty much a dream scenario with queens here. The Unlingun player jams for a little bit under $200, folds back to the cutoff, who calls for 76 total. We're going three ways to a run out. Let's try to hold. The rivered ace doesn't look great for us, but we show our hand and somehow the pocket queens are still good. Following pocket queens, we pick up ace jack of diamonds in the hijack. Here, folds to me and I open up the action to 
We get the cutoff to 3 bet us to 50. It folds back to me, and I'm not really sure what the 2 3 3 betting range is just yet. Uh, he's also only sitting $300 deep, so. With that said, I decided to make the call here with a very playable hand, although not too comfortable with it. We'll see a flop. Flop comes ace, king, nine, two spades. I check, and he throws out a bet of $20. Seems very, very odd. Uh, seems like he has a hand that is very nutted so far, or he has absolutely nothing. I definitely won't be check-raising just yet into the three-better on this board, so I flap, and we're off to a turn. Turn comes the five of hearts. Once again, I check. He bets $60, and I'm still not really sure where I'm at. As played, we have top pair, decent kicker, don't really need to overplay our hand just yet. I call 60 once again. The river comes the deuce of spades. The flush draw completes, but I don't think he has too many of the flush draws. I think in Hollywood a little bit, just to make it seem like I have a decision to make, but obviously, I check. Luckily, he checks it back, we show our hand, and we're good. Not sure what I was really beating on this board, but lucky to take this one down. Next spot we get involved in, we look down at 8, 6 of hearts in the cutoff. There are two limpers to me, and being in position of them, let's mix it up a little bit. I decide to raise my suited gapper to $20. The player on my left, the button makes the call, so no longer in position in this hand. The big blind and one of the limpers also call, so multi-way to a flop. Flop comes ace, 8, 8, 2 spades. Well... If you're going to play ace-6 suited, swapping trips is going to be pretty easy for us. Anyways, action checks to me. Limpers check in a way where they seem like they don't really have much. So with trips, I decided to bet $30, assuming that I have them all drawing dead a high percentage of the time. Only the button makes the call for 30. Off to a turn. Turn comes the four of spades. This really isn't ideal. I think I can get value from ace-x in one spade holdings pretty much. Um, so with that said, he doesn't have a big stack, so I size to 115 as he has 200-ish dollars behind. He tanks, counts on his chips, but unfortunately ends up making the fold. We still haven't really lost a hand yet at this table. Last hand of the session here, Jack-10 of diamonds and the big blind. There's an early position open to $15. Folds back to the small blind who 3-bets to 60. He has a super narrow 3-betting range just like everyone else at this table. Being in position of that, playing with a, I guess, playable hand. Uh, certainly could just fold, certainly can just call as well. Uh, folding is really boring for the vlog, so we cold call to 30 in position. And the early position pre-flop raiser calls as well. So going three ways to a flop in a three bet pot, flop comes eight, seven, six, rainbow. So pretty decent flop for us as it smashes our range more than the other two players. Uh, we do have two overs. We got a gutter to the nuts and backdoor diamonds. The small blind throws out a C bet of $65. And I'm thinking in my head, obviously I'm not good here. If I raise in this spot, do I think this player can fold an over pair? I really don't think so, so not right now at least. So with that said, in position, no need to blow up the size of the pot. Good price to continue, I decide to call, and the other player folds. The turn comes the 9. What a miraculous 9, giving us the absolute nuts. He checks, as it's very face-up, he has an overpair. I decide to play this a little more deceptively and check it back with the nuts. The river comes a 10. Well, not really amazing, but uh, with the straight on the board out there, is there any way he can call a jam for a chop? He checks, and let's put this to the test, obviously sitting with the nuts pretty much. Let's see if he can call for a chop. I throw out a jam of $230 effective. He asks account for the pot. Uh, the dealer just kind of spreads out the chips. And while he thinks things over, at the end of the day, he says, fuck it, call. We show our hand and scoop this one up as he shows his pocket queens. He is not too happy about that. Wrapping up the session here uh, with my boy Alex, Wolfgang Poker. 
any words for the vlog? Like I said in my vlog, go check it out. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna hit him up in the uh, Hawaiian Gardens and I'm probably going to do a lot better than this session. I made 200, he made like a rack. We're gonna flip how, it next time. How long did you play for? Uh, you got here before me. I was probably three, four hours, so nice. not bad. Not okay, bad. yeah, we, we were on the same two, three table, didn't run into any spots. Hopefully we'll run into some uh, at the Hawaiian Gardens. We'll be there in a day or two, for sure. Watch this sometime if you want to see his perspective go check it out it's definitely up because you're seeing this video in like december his, uh... Look at this. This <laughs> oh. gave me one of these tokens you guys should go check the link in his bio and buy them because they're the first what is the first thing i told you i'm like wow these are really high quality and you're like look at that show the camera there it is check this out oh you gotta flip it <laughs> but www.rampagepokerstore.com www Anyways, this session was pretty good for me. Played the 2-5, like I said. It broke, unfortunately, after like an hour and a half. Uh, in for 800, out for 14. And then hopped in the 2-3. Just a good time. The 2-3 is a really good game that we were in. Played for like two and a half hours. In for four, out for 14. This place has really treated me well in the past three days. Yeah. So we'll He's be... gonna move out here. Uh, right by this casino. And just I... grind it four nights a week. That just might happen. I love San Diego. <laughs> I love California. So much better than Boston. The weather's it's a just... little bit nicer. Oh, so much nice. It was raining today, but so yeah, nice. Yeah. I mean, I'm a Cubs fan, but we got winning teams out here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. That's how many? <laughs> what did LeBron say? I can't. The city of champions. I can't. Oh. We can't say anything this year. 2020 has been pretty bad. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Check out his vlog if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time. Later.